everybody, and welcome uh, to this spoiler review for X-Men 97, Episode 8, Tolerance is Extinction, Part 1. We've got so much to dis- discuss here on The Geek Buddies! <gasps> hey! <laughs> so here we go. This is the one we've been looking forward to. It's been teased. Bo DeMeo has sent us 700 episodes to watch of X-Men, the animated series, to prep us for this stuff. (laughs) Of course, this is borrowed from comic books and from the comic book storyline as well. But this is X-Men 97, Bo DeMeo's approach to this, directed by Chase Conley. What an episode to start off this three-part run here to, I think, finish out season one. You know, as if the other episodes didn't stuff or were chock full of stuff, Every episode, this one shoved in so many things here. Bastion's plan coming into full fruition here. Seeing how human sentinels have been uh, have been conditioned, have been born for quite some time, waiting to be triggered. Finding out that the Cooper there is is part of this whole plan initially with Bastion and Sinister Cable coming back, having daddy issues and father and son issues going on. Jean Grey trying to still reconcile her stuff with Madeline Pryor. Uh, Nightcrawler dropping some pearls of wisdom, human wisdom on us, ironically. And you've got Sunspot and Jubilee doing their thing with Sunspot's mom here. So there's so much that leads to this finale with Charles showing back up, Magneto being right, and essentially EMPing the Earth to kill the mutants, but also send the humans back into the Stone Age technologically. So, Michael, your overall thoughts on this just opening episode with two more to go for this storyline. I mean, this is the opening episode. We got two more to go. It's <laughs> <laughs> just what I said. Yes. I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. <laughs> uh, no, it's great. I think I think it's Bastion's mom who says to uh, Gene, Scott, and Cable at one point that yeah. uh, when, they, when they see Bastion, uh, 16-year-old Bastion's drawing of, yeah. you know, yeah. um, mutants and uh and 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 omega sentinels um she says that uh the best art imitates life and i think look we're going to talk about all the nerdy shit we're going to talk about the cameos we're going to talk about some of the epic action scenes in this in this episode but my biggest takeaway from this is this show has a lot to fucking say (laughs) and if you're not paying attention like i don't know what to tell you like it is hitting on it is hitting on America post 9-11. It is hitting oh, yeah. on uh, Black Lives Matter. It is hitting on things that are going on right now with the way that the world is dealing with Israel and Palestine. Like It is yes. dealing with humanity's fear of AI. It is dealing with absolutely everything uh, and, and and pulling in the Holocaust in a, in a way mm. that... Uh, that X-Men has always referenced because of Magneto's origin, but really just, I mean, Val Cooper's speech at the end, like everything that Val Cooper says in this episode, everything that Bastion says about his plan in this episode, this isn't just uh, a a muscly purple villain monologuing. I mean, this is a guy talking about some heavy stuff. um, And it's like, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's just the world we've been living in for the past several years. Uh, mm. where we feel like we're just jumping from one crazy thing to another crazy thing. But uh, the philosophy, the ideas, and um, the real-life parallels that they are drawing in these animated episodes is really hitting hard for me. I mean, in the in the way that yeah. a really good comic book story is supposed to do. Uh, and then on top of that, they are giving us um, some mutant action, the likes of which we've barely seen in the movies. I mean, we've, we yeah. saw some stuff in this episode and we've said this from episode one, but I mean, seeing these mutants really go for it, particularly Magneto going at the end of this episode Oof. and going, let me show you what I can really do. Um, yeah. It's just from top to bottom, this was a great episode. And to end the episode with Magneto and Professor X being back on the board and knowing that we have two other full episodes to go, I mean, yeah. where this thing is going to go is going to get wild. Yes, yeah, Shannon, uh, Michael alludes to the messaging here, certainly dealing with the collective trauma, certainly the idea of apathy, the idea of so many of these things happening that we just become apathetic to it. And it's essentially saying like people still need to understand this stuff is important. You can't just ignore it. 
commentary about humans and mutants coexisting, but not in the way that Charles had envisioned 300 years in the future. Mutants, the ones that are still alive, are slaves to the humans and all of that. But then we also have stuff going on in the present day with all these characters and their own personal issues. And Trish ends up being like one of these human sentinels, adding a whole nother level to the Trish beast situations what did you think overall on this and where it led to with magneto showing his power as michael said but also charles showing up here saying oh uh i hope i'm not too late x-men to me you know what i'm saying <laughs> i mean along with the spectacle that that was awesome and again knowing that there are two more episodes of this of this yeah. arc um you know they have set the bar really really high i mean watching yeah. Uh, uh, Logan and Kurt, uh, you know, double team all the, you know, the He's Manchurian awesome. Sentinels, um, <laughs> watching, watching Nightcrawler use three swords because of his tail, like that stuff. That's just gravy. All that is icing. Like that is just so yeah. much fun to see and watching Logan have the opportunity in animation, which granted that, you know, they're, they're human sorta, uh, but mm. watching him be able to dismember <laughs> multiple ones as he's yeah. falling to the ground like really getting to see what wolverine can do but also the the larger things that are being addressed the the apathy was was the big one for me as they're talking about like hey you know when you don't have skin in the game it's very yeah. easy for the next thing to come you forget you know you have a short memory about these terrible things that happen um this is this is when you have really good writers crafting a really well told story because yeah. the larger things that they do touch on um they, they don't feel forced they feel they feel perfectly mm -hmm. in in sync with the narrative that the characters are going through um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think I, I think easily this this is my favorite episode of the season thus far. And knowing that this yeah. is just sort of the opening shot, um, I, I have very high hopes for where the next two are going to go. Yeah, I have to agree with you. I think this is my favorite episode as well, because as Michael pointed out, the commentary, you guys know, I pick up on that social commentary, whether it's there or not, sometimes in these situations. <laughs> I mean, but I wasn't going to say it, but I'm glad yeah, you said it. <laughs> I do, but you know, I'm most, most, of the time I'm, <laughs> most of the time I'm right. And I'm certainly right here. I mean, this is so effective in the messaging, right? So like, like all good um, films and TV shows that work on the surface like you don't have to go bone deep and see the messaging that's going on to enjoy the episode you don't like get out is a great horror film you don't need to read the social commentary that's going on there about how we treat black how white people treat black people and what have you you don't have to explore it because but it's there if you want to and certainly this episode works without you needing to go too bone deep there's a villain the villain is trying to convert humans who don't know they're being converted into these things essentially becoming mutants themselves ironically becoming the thing they hate uh in order to rule so they because because it's born out of their fear of being irrelevant or made irrelevant which is every human's fear and especially nowadays with ai so it works on that but if you go deeper as mike was alluded to some of these causes some of these things i mean the fact that he uses it's all for a greater cause the fact that bastion you know great great again the fact that bastion says hey uh you know um was it is it is it tolerance or is it guilt right he's taking these shots all around the um the uh, uh arguments that we've been having online on social media in our world uh, in 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 our country as well about this idea of acceptance and is it real and by the end it's magneto going f this and even cooper saying Mag magneto is right which is a hell of a turn to see cooper go on in her arc so so much going on here but still the smaller stories of a father and son of a mother trying to figure out where she fits in all of this if she's even the mom and of course a son uh being ashamed to be a mutant because his, her his mom hates mutants so there's so much here that is still working uh, along with the strong powerful messaging underneath that makes this so so good so let's deal with the bastion situation here he unleashes an army of prime sentinels we finally get the full plan here we find that he's the one that you know uh, uh used cooper to uh put that uh, um UN, put that uh, video out there showing that charles his death has quote unquote been faked and she's been working with bastion and sinister bastion's taking care of business here we find out his past with his mom we find out that this he's been essentially groomed to be this thing in order to bring aboard bring about this future with humanity and we see doom we see zemo we see another woman there i don't know who that is but essentially he has been charged with the top villains 
and he's putting his plan in motion, which of course leads to Magneto being there at the end using his power. So what do you think about how they handled Bastion and his storyline here throughout this episode, uh, Mike, and what he did? Uh, it was great. I mean, you know, like they've done with other storylines, they kind of took a very complicated comic book origin and, mm. uh, and, uh, you know, just uh, got the got rid of the edges, got rid of the edges a little bit. So in the comics, <laughs> you know, he there's there's the siege perilous. There's a bunch of things that led to the birth of Bastion. And this was sort of taking what we've seen in X-Men 97. As John referenced, there's a lot of uh, I don't know that there's a ton. There's maybe like one, two, three, four, five, maybe six episodes that Bodomeo has said you should check out. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but but one of them deals with uh, a Nimrod that gets destroyed uh, right. in about the time period that uh, Bastion's dad probably would have uh, gotten Bastion's mom pregnant. So when Nimrod, mm. a the Sentinel from the future, gets destroyed, he kind of gets destroyed like the T one thousand in the Terminator yeah. movies in the in the in the animated series. So he kind of like turns into a bunch of liquid metal, can reform, and so it looks like a piece of that uh, crawled away and and, and crawled in. A a poor janitor's ear and there we go and and then and then bastion growing up with that sentinel in him could hear different electronics different kind of machines and heard the master mold and that sort of gave birth to this version of bastion yeah. so kind of nice clear cut got what's going on really good to go um and then yeah like i think realizing and 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 people you know um all across YouTube and Twitter and everywhere on the mm. internet have been pointing out that Bastion has been present in pretty much every episode since the beginning. In the yeah. very first episode in Jean's vision, she sees a kid drawing a picture, which we have learned in this right. episode is the picture that young Bastion was drawing. We've seen him in photos with Forge. We've seen him in meetings at the UN. So Bastion's yeah. been ever present throughout this. And the whole idea that he's been sort of behind the scenes, manipulating things, moving things around, and even last week's episode, which I think we talked about, when Mr. Mm. Sinister is like, you're an idiot, you shouldn't have done things this way. And he's like, you assholes have been fighting the X-Men since 92 and you haven't done shit. So I'm going to do right. it my way. And his way is hiding in the shadows and working with sympathetic uh, humans in the United Nations, working with Dr. Doom, working with rational Gino, humans. Working with rational yeah. humans uh <laughs> and laying out a plan that says hey these mutants are going to be a problem in the future and we need to do something about it and there's a cold calculation to the way that he's doing everything that's pretty chilling and in addition to that i, I found it really interesting that he kind of says in this episode that henry geirich uh assassinating professor x which we now obviously all know didn't really happen but didn't really work yeah. the way that he thought it did thanks to the shiar but henry gyrick's assassination of professor x actually made people sympathetic and yeah. the martin luther king jr uh you know sort of analogy here is pretty clear that uh yeah. you know people feel a certain way about a different group of people a leader who is preaching peaceful coexistence is assassinated and all of a sudden that changes a lot of people's opinions whether that right. be guilt, whether that be tolerance, I think this episode sort of lays that out. And that that was actually doing a lot to make people happy about mutants. But I thought the part mm. that he really hit the nail on the head with here, and Bo DeMeo has talked about 9-11 a lot on Twitter yeah. as, his, as his inspiration, that the reason he did Genosha is because that is so big that people can't wrap their heads around it. And yeah. that's when we become yeah. apathetic. And yeah. honestly, having lived through a couple of the things that we've lived through in the past 10, 15, 20 years, you can sort of see how that really is mm -hmm. accurate. That like cer certain things for all of us as, as people become so big, become so huge yeah. that we don't know how to handle it and we sort of tune out. Um, so his plan of turning a bunch of people into killer robots is awesome in comic book terms. And to Shannon's point, it allows us to do a lot of slicing and dicing and have some really epically awesome action sequences in this episode. So his right. plan of taking disaffected people who have been talking about mutants in chat rooms and turning them into uh, killer robots <laughs> works great. But really, as I said <laughs> before, um, his laying out his reasonings for doing it and how he did it are so close to what we are currently living in a lot of ways, yeah, that, that yeah. I think is what makes Bastion uh, a cut above the rest uh, as far as villains go and villain arcs. You know, we talk about it a lot, whether it be Thanos or Loki or Yellow Jacket or pick your villain in an MCU movie. Yeah. And some of the villains we love um, because of their motivations and some were like, okay, you wanted power. 
you wanted control, you wanted this, that seems a little whatever. Bastion's plan is a scary plan because it's a little too real. Killer robot yeah. on the side. Well, I mean, and using people's disaffected uh, feelings about the world, using people's fears, humanity's fear of being left behind, right? This idea, we always hear about this idea. People want, people get so scared of, oh, this point of view or this political move. If this takes hold, it's going to, you know, it's going to leave us behind. And so what do I do? I can dip you in this vat or I can give you these ideas. And if you become this part, I can have you triggered to do a certain thing, right? I mean, it's so obvious to me the commentary he's making if you if you take your anger and i give you this idea this theology this uh philosophy and you embrace this philosophy then you will uh, eventually rule you will we will win you know and this so this idea of taking people's fears natural fears and abusing them and when cooper calls him out he says oh i admitted certain details but the general thing and so basically lying to these people about what they're signing up to do taking advantage of their ignorance and their anger in those moments to turn them into these human sentinels i think is an is an interesting element here to throw into his villainy uh I'm going to tell you what, when Dr. Doom says yep. he doesn't like how everything went down and he didn't know it was going to go that way, and you tell Dr. Doom you'll send a memo next time, you got some balls. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you got stones for sure. Hey, Dr. Doom, yeah. I'll send a memo. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Your thoughts on the Bastion storyline here and, and what, you, what, you, what you take away from it, in essence, and what you think it's setting up here. Well, I mean, in terms of, you know, character, I mean, you guys, you, you both already kind of hit the nail on the head, um, mm. but but... You know, I just want to kind of highlight highlight the performance of Theo James oh, yeah. in this. Um, you know, and, and for those of our you know audience who are unfamiliar with Theo James, he was one of the male leads in Divergent. He was in the second season of White Lotus. He's currently on The Gentleman Netflix. Personally, aside from being a James Franco doppelganger, um, I, I think he would be a fantastic Bruce Wayne for the new Gun DC universe. Ooh, um, but his delivery is so as Vogel already put cold calculating and mm. chilling but also so relaxed yeah. and so measured and I think that's one of the things when when Mr. Sinister was first introduced in this in, in X-Men 97 um very much a throwback to that 90s X-Men animated series where your bad yeah. guys are so broad and they are so over the top. He's got the sharp teeth. And granted, this is from the comics as well. He's got the sharp teeth. His voice is way down here. Yeah, Whereas yeah. Bastion comes in and he's talking to you like a counselor would. He's talking mm -hmm. to you like a neighbor would. Everything sounds, to use a word you all both already used, everything sounds so rational because mm. of the way he delivers those lines. Like he's not, he's not twirling a mustache. He's saying, hey, this is, this is a problem that we have. Here's a solution I have come up with. And that, it, that to me makes the most frightening villains, the ones yeah. who, who can almost put you at ease with the sound of their voice, despite the content of what they're saying. Um, yeah. So Theo James, I think is doing mm. a, fantastic job in this um and, and and yeah i mean i know we'll get to the action in a minute but the moment that cable gene and scott walked into that house and saw that old lady i was like this isn't turning out right <laughs> i do i do yeah. think also really quick on the bastion plan mm -hmm. i mean one of the things i really loved is we've seen from no from uh, days of future past on we're very used to oh 300 years from now we're in some post-apocalyptic apocalyptic garbage world where everybody yeah. is fighting and mutants are almost extinct and everyone's dead and everything's on fire like whether it's terminator or x-men we're used to that the scarier version is oh no no the future's great yeah it's wonderful it's a utopia that's built on the backs of mutants we just yeah. make them do everything for us and we're having a great time. Like that's right. scarier than, oh, we're well, fighting for our survival. Of course, because there's a hypocrisy inherent in it, right? And this is the thing at the end, of, when you look at it, it, and that's what I think was so powerful when you saw that vision of the future, because it's like, well, humans out of their fear of becoming extinct, subjugated other, uh, uh, subjugated mutants so that they could stay alive. So in essence, they were fine with it as long as they were the ones subjugating others. If they were going to be subjugated, that's what they were upset about. So that's what I find. There's a hypocrisy in that point of view that I think is so essential to point out. And the show did a wonderful job of doing that. But there are some human elements here, too, Shannon. What did you think of these human moments? We have 
best. Oh, we have, so we have Cyclops and uh, Cable going at it, occasional father-son moments, which they come together near the end of the episode and show them that the Summers, you don't mess with the Summers. Gene having a little bit of thing there, trying to break them up and get them to work together as well. But then you have Blind Spot and Jubilee and what's going on with his mom. Uh, and then you have Trish, Toby, and Beast. Uh, and then later on, Cooper lets Magneto go. So talk to me about the human relationships throughout this episode with these situations. What do you think about how they handled it? And did they advance it effectively for you to buy into these storylines? I mean, Scott is very much in a no-win scenario. <laughs> I mean, the... the, the um, yeah, dramatically rank- so, yes. <laughs> yeah, the rancor that, that Cable has, you know, obviously you would understand it. Like, I'm not, yeah. I'm not you know, overly inclined to have this, you know, father-son reunion with you. You know, the, my, my mom is gone. Um, yeah, right, but, right. And Scott also, such a lame <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, and, and I'm glad that they're leaning into that um, because that yeah. is a like I, I think probably one of the one of the um, challenges of like like an old 80s series like when I think about like Duke in GI Joe Duke is like mm. oh Duke's the leader what else about him uh, blonde uh, you know <laughs> I mean the fact that they're leaning into Scott's kind of he's kind of a dork. Um, yeah. like he's, he is an incredible leader. Like he's very, he is very, very good at this. He's better when he can lean on professor X, but he is a good leader, but socially, yeah, he is a little awkward and to yeah. watch him try to have these moments with cable, um, you, you know, it, you do feel bad for him. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the moment that he, that, you know, his, his, uh, action movie one line are like, let's show him what happens when they, when they mess with the summers, like, ah, oh, <laughs> dad, you dork. <laughs> <laughs> Just really, really great moments. Um, I, I also really liked the Gene Gray. Let's do some good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's do some good. Um, <laughs> Elliot Ness, you know, full, Ness. full tilt. Um, <laughs> but I also love the Kurt and, and Gene, like the brief oh, yeah. scene that we got with Kurt and Gene, where yeah. you see Gene is trying, is starting to understand, like, Again, Madeline also in a no win in a no win scenario. She's just like yeah. the fact that she has Madeline's memories. She should have reached out. She's like, you know what? May- I-, I was probably not. I was probably not as um, not as helpful a- as as I could have been. Um, the way when she tells Nightcrawler to call her Jean, when he calls her Miss Gray, like call me Jean. He's like, yeah, Madeline liked to be called by her first name too. Like that's just yeah. those are great little character moments that you're able to do in just a couple of lines that do yeah. make them so resonant with the audience. It does make you aside from the spectacle. I mean, it does that really makes you feel for the characters. Um, Sunspot and Jubilee, yeah, that was great. Uh, I, you know, I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed their moment, especially when they crash land in the ball. Uh, Yeah. yeah, Across the board. I thought all, all of the human stuff, all of the, this is not what they were, but, but all of the soapy moments, I thought all the soapy moments were really, really nice. And uh, again, I got, I'm excited to talk about the action, but I'll wait, but I'll, I'll wait. I'll I'll swing back to you on that one. Yeah. Uh, uh, Michael, your thoughts on the, uh, on the uh, human storylines and and the relationships that were established even further in this, in this episode. Well, I got to disagree with Shannon on Scott Summers. Uh, Uh, What? What? Like this show. He's such a dork. Such a dork. Okay. Let me, let me rephrase. (laughs) Sure. Scott Summers is a dork when it comes to emotions and trying to express it, but but not in, in the do like I think what Scott Summers has suffered from a lot, particularly in the movies and uh, in some other forms of content, is people do kind of put him in that Duke from GI Joe category of mm. okay, like he's 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 cool, he's got like laser beams, but he's kind of a dork and he's kind of dumb, and he's and there's not much else to him aside from he's the leader. And I think this show has done the absolute opposite with Scott Summers and has shown that they really, Mm. really do understand him. I mean, he's on this journey where he keeps leaning on the, what would Professor X do? What would Professor X do? Dude, Professor X left and he's coming back in the 11th hour. Like Scott Summers is on a Mm. journey to figure out who he is as a leader, as a person, like what he really believes. And I think they're doing a really nice nuanced job with that. Uh, I mean, they did an amazing job in those first couple episodes balancing that, you are you do have a stick up your butt you're scott summers but holy shit you're a good leader holy shit Mm -hmm. look what you can do and then him and gene and madeline going on their whole journey like dude's been through the fucking ringer and so now to end up with your son there and going well this is really awkward and kind of going through this whole thing where at the end 
I didn't think that his, oh, let's sew these toasters that we can do was a cheesy line. I was like, look, this is how this family bonds. <laughs> like, this is it. Like, this is not a family that's going to be like, let's have like some kind of like big sit down emotional moment. Like when you see, I know we're going to talk about the action in a minute, but like when you yeah. see Gene telekinetically driving the car, Cable grabbing his dad's hand, pulling him up so that he can shoot a fucking hole in a cave while he takes out prime sentinels. And then they all land like the fucking father and son and the Holy Spirit. That's pretty Whoa. awesome. Don't tell me Scott <laughs> Summers is a dork. So I thought all that was really, really well done and not like, <laughs> And to Shannon's point, even though these are like the quote unquote soapy elements, the character elements, it didn't feel soapy. It didn't feel like they, you, you know, like I, the biggest right, joke in the world to right, me. Right, right. And look, I love the Matrix. Don't come for me in the comments. But from the very first moment I saw the Matrix in the theaters to now, there's that moment where Agent Smith is coming to get them and Trinity takes a beat to have a five minute conversation about telling Neo she's always been in love with him. And you're like, get, <laughs> get, 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 get in the phone. Come on, get in the phone. And they didn't do that. They just had it really nice laid out. Like you went from these two, these three people are estranged to these three people just did something fucking awesome. And it works mm -hmm. as far as that arc. So I, uh, I'm a big fan of what they're doing with Scott Summers. And I don't even care that his license plate said slim. I think it was awesome. <laughs> um, and of course he has a Porsche. And of course he has a Porsche. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And then, and then I thought, you know, like Madeline, you know, doing the whole Madeline uh, Goblin Queen thing in episode three yeah. and then having her die in Genosha, you're like, oh, man, we just lost it. But I think they've done a nice job of really using Madeline and the loss of Madeline to try to, to really build this story as far as Jean and Cable and what's going on with them. And it's and Cable's entire motivation of like, I want to save my mom. Like, yeah, yeah. it's just, it's, it's, it's all really, really nicely done. And to Shannon's point, it's done with a minimum of writing. They're not like hitting it on the head. They're not like, but it's just like, it's kind of laid out really nicely. And I think I thought Ooh. that scene with Kurt and uh, Gene was just yeah. lovely on every level. I mean, it was lovely seeing Gene struggle with, I, I have all these memories now that are not my memories. Yeah. I know these are Madeline's memories, so I don't know how to feel. And Kurt being like, you feel how you feel. Like family is family, like, and then really yeah. using his relationship with Rogue and the fact that Mystique is his mom and that he had a shitty mom, uh, kind of to lay out this whole sort of message, which any LGBTQ person really responds to, particularly mm. people whose families turned them away, which is blood is blood, family is family. Uh, yeah. You get to, you get, you know, like you get to choose your family. Um, right. Which the X-Men is a chosen family at the end of the day. I and mean, that's what's made them work for so long is that they are the ultimate chosen family it's why we love them so that was all really really well done and then um the sunspot jubilee stuff a we got to see jubilee in her comics accurate outfit which yeah it was fun awesome for every fun for every nerd out there uh and totally. we got to see sunspot finally fully power up which was also really cool mm. but yeah i mean the whole balance and we talked about this last week the whole balance of roberto's mom going i i like mutants i feel bad for them I feel bad for mutants. Right. You know, it's the it's it's what Bastion said. It's the tolerance is a little bit guilt. So yeah. I feel bad for mutants. I don't really want to deal with mutants. I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have a fundraiser. I'm gonna raise a bunch of money for Genosha. But when my son comes into the literally crashes the party and yeah. is revealed to be a mutant, and two fucking robot people fly in and say, "Oh no no, we're not attacking them. We're here to save them. They should come with us." And, you know, when your mom looks at you and says, oh, you should go with the police. You yeah. Go with the police. This is probably fine. Um, you, it's it's like, this is, this is uncomfortable, um, but yeah. really well done. And so, like, I just think that across the board, I mean, we've talked a lot about how every one of these episodes just packs so much in. So you have hmm. all of this social commentary, but the social commentary didn't take away from the soapy character moments for all of these characters, which also didn't take away from the fact that we had epic action in 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I liked the emotional beats here. They're necessary because the action is important. The, 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 uh, the commentary is important, but without the emotional beats of these characters and us investing in them because of these emotional beats, the show wouldn't work. So I love that they have that. And yes, the Jean Grey stuff was great. Families of Choice was great. Her, uh, 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 Bernardo's mom closing the doors on them was a symbolic thing to have that. That's not an accident for him for them to include that in the episode, which I thought was really powerful. And Cooper's speech 
to Magneto, I thought was really powerful as well. And then Cooper's speech afterwards to Bastion, I thought was really strong. She was sucked into this idea of wanting to help them because she was afraid. She didn't know that they were going to go that far. And, and now that they have gone that far, her act of defiance is to let Magneto go. And then she gives that speech about the idea of apathy and the idea of these big things happening. And we can't just turn our brains off. We have to be aware. And you're right, Mike, to bring up earlier, we are see, we are watching this episode as college campuses are inflamed with battles, with police involved and people on both sides of this conflict involved going at each other. And it is a time now with so much unrest. So the show couldn't have come at a more topical time in our world and how many of us are really paying attention to that and how many of us are not wanting to engage because it's all too much. So I, I love mean, that the show addresses that. Yes, the, go ahead. The, the, the sad part is this show could have come out anytime in the past 10 years. And we would have been like, we need this show now more than ever. Fair point. Fair point. Fair point. It hasn't stopped, <laughs> but yeah, That's but true. yes, you are and absolutely it, right for centuries, for centuries. You're right. Uh, my, uh, Shannon, let's go back to the action. Now you want to talk about it? Take the floor. What do you think of the action sequences here? Wolverine, Nightcrawler, the battles uh, la later on in the episode. what do you think of all this stuff uh, going on here in the action? I mean, the Wolverine Nightcrawler scene was just fantastic. Again, because yeah. they are not totally human, getting uh, Logan getting the opportunity to slice and dice was a lot of fun. And when he says, you know, lady, I got six reasons. And from the, you know, you get that gunslinger <laughs> shot from behind where a head hits the ground and you see yeah. a sword and Nightcrawler reminds him, no, we, you know, we've got nine. So watching that 360 shot, I mean, something that the movies did do really well. And granted, this was back in 2003 when X2 came out was the action of Nightcrawler, like getting yeah. to see how cool it is, like what an effective fighter he is. The amount of incredible moments that there are in that movie that are Nightcrawler centric. Um, I, I think the animated series is doing him justice right now. Um, yeah. the, the best one being, because I know we're running out of time, the best one yeah, yeah. being as Logan stabs a sentinel as Nightcrawler bamps him and you see what Nightcrawler experiences when he is teleporting. And yeah. even though they don't, I mean, seeing Logan's face like this, that was cool. ah! <laughs> I mean, that was <laughs> the coolest most fun thing to watch and as they you know teleport to the outside of the mansion where everything's on fire you see that the teleportation the physical toll that it does take on kurt you see them yeah. both sucking wind you see him sweating um but watching the two of them fight together is just yeah. so much fun and getting to see him wheel, like everyone who read who reads the comics know that you know nightcrawler is an incredible swordsman incredible fencer but watching him get to use that third sword with the tail is just so much fun and yes the yeah. the summer's family outing as they are working <laughs> together <laughs> to escape while while blasting sentinels behind them yes that was a lot of fun and also yeah. scott summers is a dorky dad <laughs> all right mike your thoughts on the action real quick uh, I mean, you know, Sh Shannon hit it. I mean, I think what's great okay. with X-Men is we've seen so many X-Men movies. We've seen, There's the animated series. We've seen how, so many video games. So when you get to see something you haven't seen before, uh, it's really exciting. And seeing yeah. uh, Bamfing from Wolverine's perspective oh. on the inside was pretty great. Also, Morph continues to deliver. Uh, Morph, <laughs> yeah. Morph going full juggernaut, bitch, uh, was, was pretty, pretty great. And yeah, like, look, really quickly on Prime Sentinels, like in the comics, yeah. once somebody became a Prime Sentinel, they were gone. That was, I was it. Gonna say, they were, he they kills were a robot. Them, they killed them. So, okay, okay. so they're, they're, they're gone. Now, given the number of people in the world mm. that seem to have been turned into Prime Sentinels, I am curious, how much of a take back sees we're going to get? Like, is is Hank going to yeah. come up with a cure? Is Cable's techno virus the key Good to points. getting them back? Is Trish Tilby going to be able to go out with Beast on a date or is she gone forever? So I'm curious to see what they're going to do with the Prime Sentinels. Um, but yeah, the action from top to bottom. I If my crush on Kurt Wagner wasn't already as high <laughs> as it could be, this episode would take it over. I don't know what it is about that fuzzy yeah. blue elf, but I have had a mad crush on that mutant for my entire life. And it's not, it's not going away anytime soon after this episode. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, just to get to the end really quick and to touch on it, like then getting to yeah, see let's, Magneto. Let's move into the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just getting to see Magneto really unleash. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, all the other, all the other cameos of Spidey and Silver Samurai and Omega Red that we got there at the end. But uh, that Magneto yeah. kind of takes out 
all of human infrastructure, like wipes out all power. Yeah. Like, like it's a, it's a blackout. It's a global blackout. And he's like, fuck you guys. Um, and then to your point, John, you know, Val's speech, Val Cooper's speech, who I was waiting for her to turn into mystique. She hasn't. Yes. It, it she seems hasn't. now, it seems now that she's just a human, but yeah. Her whole speech about being on Genosha and all of the feelings that she felt, but the one feeling she didn't feel was surprise because yeah. this is what humanity does. And that yeah. whole speech happening as we see Magneto and her coming to that conclusion of Magneto's right. Charles is wrong. Yeah. Like, like we're never getting like, look at the Holocaust. Look at 9-11. Look at Black Lives Matter. Look at January 6th. Look at take your pick. Look at look yeah. at college campuses today. Val Cooper's like, this isn't going away. Magneto's right. And then to have Magneto just drop the bomb and then Professor X uh, show up at the end in his comics accurate spacesuit. Uh, you're just like, all right, this is uh, I, I, I this could be a season finale. We the same thing we said with episode five. Yeah. This could be a season finale. Yeah. And I'd be like, that was a great season yeah. finale. And we have two more episodes. I'm going to get my Magneto is right shirt ready to go because I was on Mag. You know, I, you know, I lean towards Magneto. I lean towards Thanos. Uh, Shannon, your thoughts on this uh, on this ending as well. And what, what do you think it leads to? Uh, and did you like it? I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, watching watching Magneto go to the North Pole, you know, you see like he, he's in mm. he's in his his uh, black jockey shorts. Um, and you yeah, know, he, he has, has the, the magnetic <laughs> sphere and I was like, oh, I wonder what, and then seeing the, you know, the, the yellow, uh, magnetic trail slowly go mm. down and watching all of these sentinels just drop out of the sky. Um, and yeah, the speech was great as well. The whole, the whole idea that the one thing that I didn't feel was surprise, like yeah. teeing this up for where it is going to go because professor X coming back he's not going to suddenly side with Magneto. So, you know, no, he is, no. he is going to be steadfast in his beliefs, but at this point, most of the mutants are probably on Magneto's side. So yep. it's going to be, it's going to be very interesting to see how the next two episodes play out. Yeah, I agree. I think this is going to be so much fun because you've got the Charles side, the Magneto side, and then somewhere in the middle is Bastion with his crew. This is going to be a hell of a triangular battle that we're going to get over the next two episodes. And I imagine we're going to swing our allegiances. But in the end, I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure Charles and them are going to win. But what I like the show, what I like that the show is doing is it is asking questions of you, the viewer, as you're watching it. It is putting you in these hard places to think about where you land and to see the logic of some of certain sides, at least a little bit of the logic of certain sides, and kind of put that into context for yourself and maybe even adjust your point of view a little bit to be to have it a full fleshed out point of view on all these angles and all these sides. And I love that. Uh, overall yeah and look i mean like spoiler alert i'm pretty sure the good guys are gonna win but um which ones are you know, good we, guys though well you know what that's a really good question <laughs> uh, what I'm saying. it's all about <laughs> perspective but that's but yeah no, well let me let me put it yeah. this way I, it's, I'm, I'm pretty sure bastion's gonna lose but yeah, the fair, fair i think fair. but i think that you know they teed up william striker in this episode we yes saw william yeah, striker the on the news uh, and we know that Bo DeMeo wrote the next 10 episodes that are going to be season two of X-Men 97. Right. And the real question is no matter who, here's the thing. And I think this is where we're going to land up. And it's going to be a really interesting discussion when we see the finale, which is no matter who wins, the mutants lose. Like yeah, every human, kinda. every human sitting at home who watches this whole thing happen. And the aftermath is going to be either a bunch of humans are going to be healing from prime Sentinel or they yeah. died because they became prime Sentinels. Magneto wiped out power for everybody globally. Yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. the X-Men lied about Professor X in people's minds. And right. they're, we're going to come out of this going, yeah, why would I trust these mutants? And so it's like the yep. mutant dilemma of we're fighting and we're fighting, but we're ev two steps forward, two steps back. Like it's right. going to be really interesting because they feel like no matter what they do, the humans are going to be like, yeah, I don't like all this. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I agree with you, especially when you have the UN undercutting you and you're trying to create peace it's that can't help either uh all right well there you go that's our spoiler review for episode eight we could have gone on for another hour you guys know there was so much in this episode hopefully we hit a lot of the main beats that you all were hoping to hear us talk about uh but uh, thank you so much for listening or watching us here uh on this spoiler review shannon what do we have to tell them yeah, it's like to follow us on social media. On Twitter, it's at geek underscore buddies. On Instagram, at the underscore geek underscore buddies. If you'd like to follow me on social media, on Twitter, it's at Shannon underscore McClung. On Instagram, at Shannon the Geek Buddy. Is Scott Summers a dorky dad? Follow uh, Mike Vogel at MK Tune and tell him, yeah, he is. Is yeah. Scott Summers a dorky dad? 
follow Johnny Roke at the Roke it says and say you agree with him. Yeah, yeah, totally. Such a dork. Uh, uh, Michael, what do we have to tell him? Speaking of dorks, I had a lovely time talking with my two buddies about this episode today. And here's what you guys can do for us. You can smash Fair. that like button below. Subscribe to Johnny's Outlaw Nation page. Leave your comments below. What do you think of X-Men 97? Where do you think things are going? What parts of the comic books do you think they're going to be adapting next? Oh, yeah. Like, Where do you think is going on in X-Men 97? Let us know below. If you're listening to us on a podcast, go ahead and leave us some stars and comments so we go up in the rankings and more people can find us. And as always, the best thing you can do is retweet this video, post it on your social, send it to your friends, and tell them to hang out with your buddies, the Geek Buddies. Oh, there you go. Thank you so much for joining us. And of course, we've got our main show coming up on Friday. And the three of us are hanging out at Disney tomorrow as we're recording this. And so we might have some, you know, we might post some pictures and some videos. So look out for all of that on our social medias. And we'll talk to you next time with another brand new spoiler review episode of X-Men 97 here on the Geek Buddies. <gasps> hey! hey!